ecstatic. We are ecstatic to have Reverend Jesse Jackson with us today. He needs no more introduction. Reverend Jackson. Good morning. Say, save the workers. Save the family. Save the workers. Save the families. Save the workers. Save the family. Keep hope. Alive. Red and yellow. Brown, black, and white. We're all precious in God's sight. Everybody is somebody. Save the workers. Save the families. Keep hope. Alive. Keep hope. Alive. Bang. Number one. <laughs> Let me uh, express my thanks to management uh, and to labor for allowing me to share briefly with you today as we tour Boeing plants around the country as well as for the renewed focus on corporate America. In some sense, we gather today to address the American dream, the unfinished dimensions of that dream, and the concerns of the American workers. Really, what is the American dream? It's a one big tent dream. All of us fit under one big tent, and none are in the margin. Not in the margin because of your race, your gender, your religion. All fit under one big tent. Many races, many faces, many places. I hear the writer saying, give me your tired, your poor, your humble masses, who yearn to breathe free. And the price of admission is that you yearn to breathe free, that you yearn to dignity that you yearn to work, that you yearn to be productive, that you yearn to stabilize your families and, and to raise your children. And what makes America great is this multilingual, multiracial, multi-character. When we come together, we become members of a common team pursuing a common dream. Today, the unfinished business simply is how shall we treat the American worker into the future? We are the most powerful nation on earth. We are the wealthiest nation on earth. But then what about the American worker? Is the American worker sharing in that wealth, that growth, and that prosperity? Those are the unanswered questions. And fundamentally, there's it is not so. There's growing concentration of wealth in media, in banks. Too few people have so much. And too few people have, too many people don't have enough. For the record, most poor people are not black, they're not brown. They're white, they're female, they're young. But whether white, black, or brown hunger hurts, whether they live in those Ark Mountains, Appalachia, or East St. Louis, they still are God's children, and they still are American citizens. For the record, most poor people, most poor people are not on welfare. They work every day. They catch the early bus. They work every day. They raise other people's children. They work every day. They cook food in our children's schools. They work every day. They drive cabs. They work on gambling boats. They change beds in hotels. They work every day. They work in the hospitals as orderlies. When we are sick, they wipe our bodies to cool our scorching fever. They empty slop jars and bedpans. 
no job is beneath them, and yet when they get sick, they cannot afford to lie in the bed they make up every day. Every American deserves a health care plan. Every American deserves a health care plan. So we say workers, red, yellow, brown, black, and white, you are a team. And team must see who your real allies are, who your real adversaries are. If some team members feel hurt because of gender bias, it weakens the capacity of that team to score touchdowns. They feel abused because of race or religion. That team cannot be productive. When the Rams play San Francisco, if the team members have hurt each other in practice, or undercut each other on Sunday, they cannot win, and San Francisco cannot lose. This year today is not so much a fight about black and white. It's a fight about wrong and right. And what team are you on? I say, Boeing workers, your competition is not white versus black or brown. It's not male versus female. It's Boeing versus Lockheed Martin and Airbus. That's your challenge. That's your challenge. And the stronger your team is, the stronger your teamwork is, the more competitive you are, the more you have your jobs and your security for your families. Last uh, Tuesday, there was an election. There was democracy in the political order. And some people expressed themselves in different ways. Some people were building airplanes, and others were building midnight trains to Georgia. And given new game with one-way tickets, just different people, you know, doing different things. But at the end of the day, the question becomes, do we have democracy, not just in the ballot box, but democracy in our workplace? Workers deserve the right to organize. Workers deserve livable wages. All children deserve a chance at first-class public education. It does not make sense to keep building first-class jails and second-class schools. Educate all of our children. Educate all of them. The media focuses so much on matters of black and white. It focuses on matters of east and west and not north and south. I go in Appalachia, every six hours, a coal miner dies from black lung disease and can't get black lung benefits. And that's not right. Are they focus in Washington on the intricate details of a sex scandal? On the real side, by the Mississippi River, every day, 15 Hundred Americans die from cancer. A half million Americans die a year from cancer. We should be focused on how to eliminate cancer and not eliminate each other. That's our moral obligation and opportunity. By the way, if any of you today, if someone in your family has had uh, prostate cancer, a testicular cancer, raise your hand. Breast cancer, raise your hand. Any kind of cancer, raise your hand. I should do that only because as we march through this plant today to meet with workers, labor, management, we want America to be right for all of its people. There is the biblical imperative to include all and leave no one behind. Include all Americans in the dream and leave no one behind. What does the American dream promise under the one big tent? Equal protection under the law, equal opportunity, equal access, fair share, and the concern for the least of these. I see America, let's be America. 
backbone of the American people. Let's follow the, the biblical imperative to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, set the captive free, and serve his word of his hire or her hire. Workers should work and get paid and get benefits for the work that they do. You are the heart of our, of our nation. You make America run, ride, and fly. And as America grows, you must grow. As America prospers, you must prosper. As America gets wealth, you must share the wealth. Tonight, we're going to have a rally in the city. Just saying to Boeing and other corporations, be fair, be inclusive. Inclusion leads to growth. When you include women, you grow. We include people of color, you grow. When we all work together, we grow. When that's growth, everybody is a winner. Today, we leave this place, go back home with a renewed sense of faith, a renewed hope to make this place a place of produ productivity. It's where you work every day. A place of joy, a place of success. You love your neighbor as you love yourself. You respect one another. You build our planes together. You win competition together. You win contracts together. We should not be bound by the politics of scarcity where we fight each other over what's left. Let's be about growth and inclusion. There is this biblical uh, imperative in the one law sheep. I suppose that's my sense of mission with you here today is to include all and leave no one behind. Jesus asked the question. He said, my sheep gathered, and that was a law sheep. Someone said, why well, worry about the one law sheep? Ninety-nine of us are here. Why well, worry about the law sheep? It may be a white sheep, a black sheep, a brown sheep. All I know is that one of my sheep is missing unprotected. One sheep is left vulnerable. One sheep is left behind. One sheep cannot realize the dreams. So he said, what about my law sheep? Those up front said, well, when you called us, we came. He said, but maybe you could hear the one that didn't come may have had an ear problem. Maybe you came because you could see me. One who didn't come may have had an eye problem. Maybe the one who didn't come had asthma and could not breathe and gave out. Maybe the one that's behind got kicked by a bigger sheep. Whatever the reason may be, I cannot rest. All of my sheep were included. And so it's getting dark. And some snake might bite my sheep. Some wolf might devour my sheep. Some barbed wire might tear my sheep apart. The good shepherd says, therefore, yeah. it makes heaven happy. Okay, I'm it's doing homework, so please don't interrupt. And leave no one behind. That's our appeal to you as boy and day workers. Work together as brothers and sisters. Don't die apart as fools. Love each other. Respect each other. Protect each other. The job you save of your neighbors, they be saving your own. You are bound together here in one myth of common destiny. And so, repeat these words, save the family, save the workers, save the families, save the workers. God bless America. God bless America. Keep hope alive. Red and yellow, brown, black, and white. We are all precious in God's sight. Keep hope alive. Education for all of our children, a job for all the people, health care for all the people. We march together, we work together, we pay taxes together, we survive together. This land is our land. This land was made for you and me. Keep hope alive. Keep hope. Alive. Love you. Can I go back? Yeah. Huh.
Okay.